Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Stephen Goddard. I'm a program manager in the Store Simple and the Databox Edge, Azure Stack Edge team. And I'm here to talk to you about Store Simple End of Life, uh, a great topic at 535 on the third day of Ignite. It's a smaller group. I want to make this interactive. I've also got Fabi in here, so you know, feel free to ask questions during the session or afterwards if I go through this really quickly because I get nervous. We're going to be here to talk to you, and that's our goal is to kind of reach out and talk to everyone. So quickly, our agenda, I'm going to talk a little bit about the end of life, or sometimes it's also called the end of support summary, go over some of the solutions we have, kind of compare them, and then talk about the migration roadmap. So the most important message in this session is, yes, Store Simple is uh, reaching end of support. So there's two milestones to keep in mind. The first one is mainstream support ends in July 2020. So that means up to July 2020, we will be doing bug fixes and potentially adding features. From July 2020 to December 2022, we move to extended support only. That means only security fixes at that point. Everything keeps working, the portal works, you can still push data into Azure, but if you phone us up and you need a bug fix, unless it's a security level fix, we won't give it, there won't be one forthcoming. We are in lead status, and so that's kind of Microsoft lingo. That means if you're a Microsoft partner, you'll no longer see that on the order sheet. You can't order it. If you're an enterprise customer, you can still order Store Simple. But what will happen is we're going to reach out to you if you order one from now to 2022 and just say, hey, heads up, we want to make sure you understand you know, this is end of lifing. It's still supported to that point, but you know, it's a small window. And then, like I said, finally, it, everything keeps running, right? The portal is going to keep running. Data is going to keep pushing into, up to 2022. But it is important to start the planning process. So we kind of look at three different buckets of, of workloads that we're going to talk about. So if you're using Store Simple today as a file server workload, we really think Azure File Sync is your best option, and we'll go into detail there. If it's an archival workload, and by archival, if your data goes really cold, then Azure Storage Edge or Gateway is a good use. And we'll go a little bit more into that. And as we get closer to uh, 2020 next year, we're going to start getting into third-party hardware options as well. So let's quickly talk about Azure File Sync. So Azure File Sync, I think, is a really good fit for Store Simple because it has that same concept of tiering data locally, pushing cold data up into the cloud. But I also add, it has a lot of other functionality. So it has a global namespace. You can have branch offices. Everyone sees the same list of files. Uh, so I think it's a good fit because it has all the Store Simple features, but it has extra features on top of that. You can also use Cloud Backup. It integrates with Azure Backup as well, if you, as well as the file sync. If you look at the Azure Stack and database, Databox Gateway products, um, and by the way, I might call it Databox Edge. We just rebranded it yesterday. It's Azure Stack Edge, same product, just different name. The real quick summary is Azure Stack Edge is a hardware appliance. It's a 1U. It has a storage gateway built in. It also has uh, built-in cloud compute via IoT Edge. Databox Gateway is a virtual machine, no hardware, and it just has a storage gateway. And both are cloud managed. And I just I want to spend a second on the storage gateway because it's really important the role. The storage gateway presents itself as an SMB or an FS NAS. You robocopy data to it, rsync data to it, drag and drop data to it. But its goal in life is to turn around and push that data right into Azure as quick as possible. And this is why we're recommending Azure File Sync. If you're in an active file server role, you copy a file to us, we'll copy it up to Azure, a user goes and edits it, it will come back down via egress, it'll hit save, it will go back up into Azure. So the storage gateway is not good for an active file server role. It's really good for a role. Um, one of our big reference customers is WWP Hogarth. They work on a project, and as soon as the project's over, that data goes cold. It goes cold immediately. So they copy it to us, and we push it up into Azure, because they rarely, rarely ever touch the data again. So as I mentioned, SMB or NFS shares, you use all the tools you're used to, to copying to it. We turn around, copy to Azure Files, blob storage. We do the retries. We do bandwidth scheduling if you want to. 
and then up in Azure, you know, you can do whatever with that, with that data with any service you want to. And the scenarios, like I said, you might be having an ongoing migration, um, like the case of WP, WPP Hogarth. Every few days, they copy some files to it. Uh, you could have a big one-time migration, like a big burst. Um, also archival or backup retrieval. And basically, once you get those data up into Azure, you can do whatever you want with it at that point. You can copy to a different region if it's required. All Azure services can operate on it. And again, really quickly, the edge, the, the big difference is there's IoT edge running on it. So IoT up module sensors can send data into it and perform compute on it. You can have on-premise data come in via SMB or NFS, have the gateway kind of do its thing, zip the files up, organize them, compress them, and then push up into Azure. And some scenarios here are aggregating data. Maybe you've got lots of different data. Maybe you want to structure the data. The big one is a lot of times customers just have tiny seven byte files and putting them in a big zip file with the compute and send that out. Uh, we see a lot of people using the, the compute to blur PII data, faces, uh, license plates, you know, for GDPR compliance. And then again, you're able to process that data locally where the data is in case you don't have a good connection back to Azure. So, out on the docs.microsoft.com, there's a kind of a table that we go through the different products. I'm not going to go through all of them. The main one I kind of want to reemphasize is, you know, general file server, Azure File Sync is your best answer. If you do need some compute, as well as a storage gateway, Azure Stack Edge is probably your best choice. And then if you're just purely pushing cold archival data to Azure, the, the storage gateway is probably the best way to go. Um, and again, the URLs here, that's all out there. So let's talk about migrating from Store Simple. So this first solution is just about, let's say you're not really actively using your Store Simple. You have some data in Azure. A really important note, I don't know, has anyone ever looked at the Store Simple data in Azure with File Explorer or Storage Explorer? It's all deduped, right? It doesn't look like what you think it would because we have it in a proprietary format. So if you wanted to unlock that data that's you know, not an active workload, but you want to unlock that data to use with other Azure services, I would recommend using the data management service. It's a GA service that will basically transform from that proprietary store simple format into native blob and Azure files uh, format. And then you can unlock that data, so to speak. And again, that's kind of just the case where you just want to move the data. You're not actively doing workloads. Um, and an important note, that only works with store simple 8000 series today. So let's talk about the store simple migration going from Store Simple to Azure File Sync. So first step, you know, you clearly have your appliance, you have your storage users. Some storage is tiered here. Backups go up to the cloud. Cold data go up to the cloud. So the first thing you do is you take a volume, you know, you clone it, and you mount it through a, a store virtual appliance. There's two choices. There's an 8010 or an 8020. 8020 is like for 64 terabyte file shares. 8010 is a smaller file share limit. Then you start up a VM. You connect to it via iSCSI. You install the Azure File Sync agent on that. And then you mount the shares as you need it. As I pointed out, you could also have a local file server on premise for performance. At that point, the agent's going to start doing its thing. It's going to start copying all the files over. When it's done, all the files are copied over. The next step becomes, and this is where some downtime happens. So you take user access away from the, the volumes. You do one more clone. And the idea is, at this point, you've already migrated most of your data. And this time, when you're migrating, you're only getting the deltas from that last migration. And the idea is to minimize downtime there. That data will come over. And then at that point, you can start looking at decommissioning the store sample, the virtual appliances, and the VM as well that was migrating your data and you have the native Azure File Sync solution in place. Fabian has nicely handed out cards, um, and he's here and I'm here to talk. They're providing a white, a white glove migration service um, to, to help in this step. So really quickly, is anyone running Model 1200, Store Simple Model 1200? OK, so I'm not going to lie. We don't have a great story here at the moment. We're actively working on that. I would recommend if you do want to move really quickly, you can contact support. We do have some manual tools to do, like host copy and stuff like that. Um, are, are you in a hurry to move off? Uh, OK, OK. So 
sorry. To, um, it's, it's basically we're still under development. We, Microsoft works in six month uh, semesters, so the work plan for that is from this January to June. And it will look very similar to what you saw earlier. So things to keep in mind really with migration paths and stuff like that is you know, you have, how much data do you have? And the reason I bring that up is if you have to do a host copy, that data has to come from the cloud back down on premise, and that's egress. So that, that factors in on the solution you pick. Um, your workload, you know, hopefully I've said this like three or four times, active file server role, you should look at Azure File Sync. If it's more cold archival, you can look at other systems. And then the other thing is your snapshot data. Is that important to you? Uh, is just getting the files out of store simple good enough, or are snapshots capturing those really important? Um, I do want to point out something important. If you go to docs.microsoft.com for the store simple, you're going to see this banner on every page. As we have more updates around like model 1200 or new solutions, maybe with third party solutions, we're going to constantly update this. So this, this is one of our sources for, for updates. So I, I would keep an eye on that page. And it's on all of our pages, you'll see. So that's what I have to cover today. Mainstream support, July 2020. Extended support, December 2022. We're here to help. Um, I'm going to hang around here for a while. Fabian's going to hang around here for a while. So, so if anyone wants to come up and kind of do one-on-one, more discussion, feedback, um, I'm willing to, to take anything and hear anything. So with that, thank you everyone for attending.